Hey guys, Rager here, back with the last part of our simple compositing tutorial series. And today we'll be doing a nighttime scene to finish off these tutorials. So we'll be taking our scene from looking like this to this for the daytime and sunset version of compositing. Please check out these two videos that I have linked in the description and in the comment section below. I also made a tutorial playlist so when you go on my channel you can go and see that we have added a new playlist in there for all the compositing tutorials there so you can easily find them now. As always all the files, the After Effects file, background file, character animation will all be available in the $5 Patreon tier and now let's get to work. So now that we are in After Effects again we're gonna do the same old thing have our files imported here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drag our city background in and our Sora into the foreground and hit Control Alt F to fit the character into the background. And you already see that the character does not fit into the background at all. The character has the color scheme as if they were standing on midday in the city um, while the background is obviously a nighttime background. So we're gonna use this tutorial and show you guys how you can make your character fit into a background that is much darker and um, gonna add a couple simple effects as usual, just that I'm gonna show you a couple ways on how to go about this. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna Go ahead here and use our OLM smoother. Again, I'll have the link for this free plugin in the description. And in case this is the first video you see of me, um, you might be already familiar with this, but let me just change this to a nine here. Just makes the line art look a lot more smoother because we use anti, well not anti-aliased line art, so basically pixelated line art. So this is how you import your animation into After Effects properly. Um, and the next thing we're gonna do here is we're going to be using... Uh, mm, I think we should go ahead and use the curves. And we're just gonna drag this line down a little bit to make it a little bit darker kind of like that and the thing about nighttime scenes is while you usually try for example for a sunset version you usually crank up the, the the warm color so it looks a lot warmer but in this case Sora already has really warm colors we got his brown hair the red jacket the keyblade and everything looks way too warm so basically when you want to make something darker you turn down the lightness and you usually try to take out the reds or bring in some blues and we definitely have to take out some reds here so I'm just gonna go here into the channel and go to red and then we're just gonna grab this line and drag it down until it fits into the background. I think this is fine. If we do too much, then it's probably not gonna look as good. Um, I'm still not really satisfied with this, so we're gonna add another effect. Um, I think what would work really well on this would be... Um, hmm, I think we can actually just go ahead and bring the brightness and contrast effect in here to keep it simple. Uh, and then go down with the light a little bit. Uh, it's gonna be too dark. It's okay if we go a little bit darker than we need because we're gonna make it a tad bit brighter with, an, with another effect we're gonna use in a couple minutes. Uh, I guess this is all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, let me actually go ahead and bring the blue colors in more. Because I 
think this might look a little bit better. We're just gonna fine tune this here. Gonna bring some, take this red out a little bit more, bring some blue in, and then switch back to the RGB channel. This, maybe just take out a little bit more red. Gotta make sure we don't take out too much color so it changes the actual color of the character's uh, design. So I think what we got right here works perfectly. We're still gonna change some of these colors later. Um, and in case you wanna see what it looks like before and after, this is what we got before, totally not fitting in. And then if we activate this, it looks a lot better already, but we're not done yet. So next thing we're gonna do is hit Control D. Speaking of keyboard shortcuts, let me introduce to you to today's sponsor, Torbox. Torbox is a creator controller that lets you completely customize all buttons to any software you like. Most of the industry standard softwares even have shortcuts pre-installed. But you can also customize them to your liking or add any other software you want. You can get $10 off your first order with my affiliate link in the description below. So now let me show you how I use my Toolbox controller. So basically I'll try to hold it into the camera as we go along. So I use this knob here to move the frames around and I just realized I can go into the minus frames. I had no idea this was a, this was a thing. So I'm just gonna go to the beginning here. And then I mapped my cross button here, the left one, to my workspace. So I'm gonna use this button to adjust my workspace. So if I wanna start off my workspace at around frame 20, I'll just press this button here. Go ahead and see if we can catch the full loop. Should be right about here. And then I'm gonna press this button to close the workspace. And now when I press my space button, which I could also map to the controller, but I actually haven't done that yet. I'm gonna pre-render my video here. And then we're gonna have our video played. This comes in really handy because every time I use this knob here, I can just easily move around and check some things if they're on or off and pretty much i haven't really used all of these buttons yet because i've only been using it for like about two or three days now um but i would definitely recommend a lot of you guys to get one of these they're like super super handy and they, they save a lot of time, um, especially if you have, or if you're not that good with remembering keyboard shortcuts, really makes your work a lot easier. Thank you, Torbox. Back to the video. And then we're gonna change our blending mode to, um, let's do screen. And then we're gonna put some Gaussian blur in there. Gaussian blur. And Crank this up a little bit, I think. Yeah, 49 is okay. So we're gonna hit T for opacity, and um, I think 20% should be fine. Mm, yeah, that looks fine, that looks good. Also, there's another thing I just noticed. I feel like, compared to the background, Sora is a little bit too oversaturated so I think I want to take a little bit of the color out so I'm just gonna go to the layer below again and we're gonna go to hue and saturation and take some of the color out and we're gonna do that by going to the master saturation and turn this down a little bit not too much it's really subtle so you can see this this is before this is after Makes it look a little bit more realistic in a way. Uh, maybe this is a little bit too much actually. Yeah, I think this is fine. So if we add our shine back again, this actually looks like it's properly starting to fit in. 
Um, so we have a little bit better control here. If we mark both layers, go to composition and uh, no, I'm I'm wrong here. Well, what am I doing? <laughs> Go to layer, pre-compose. Um, I'm just gonna name this Sora again. And then um, let me think. I'm I'm not sure if I like the brightness. Maybe we're we're gonna mess around with the brightness a little bit more because I don't want to use the curves. The curves also have an effect on the color, but I really just want to turn the brightness down a little bit. But I think it's already fine that way. Yeah, I think this works. We're gonna we don't wanna have it too dark actually. And now we're gonna add a light effect in there. So we're gonna add a new solid. Um this blue is already pretty fine. Mm, so we're gonna use that. But I just wanna make sure that I'm just gonna grab this color that we have here on the background. And Make it a little bit brighter instead. Okay, then zoom out a little bit. Use the pen tool. And then we're gonna make a little curve here. It's very similar to what we did in the last tutorial. And you can just hit F to bring out the masked feather. And then feather this entire thing to look really soft. And then we're gonna hit M. Uh, come on, M, close the mask, open again, and then we have the expansion here. I'm just gonna decrease this. So we have a really subtle effect here, and then we're gonna change the blending mode to screen. Uh, mm, maybe lighten. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm, I'm still not really satisfied with this. I think we can achieve a better look when we go into our Sora composition here. Because hmm. I feel like it's still not fitting in properly. I think we can still change this a little bit. So I'm gonna change this to lighten. I'm gonna go back here. And I think that looks a little bit better. Let's see, 25% possibly. Yeah, that looks better. Mm -hmm. Turn this on. And there we have our light scene. So. So, I actually want to do and make a little bit more fine-tuning because I think the reds are still too strong and I'm gonna show you a little trick in After Effects. We're gonna lock this view here and this is gonna help us with what we're gonna do next because we're gonna go into our Sora composition here and you see it opens a new menu but we're gonna go back here and as you can see, we're still inside the Sora composition, but we can see the whole actual fully composited comp that we already have. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is I actually wanna change uh, 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 this layer and take some more saturation out. This looks a little bit better. Um, and I wanna take more of the red out. I think it's fine this way, so. And that's our finished composited night scene. Um, pretty easy, pretty much the same procedure as the, tor the, bleh, the tutorials before. I hope you like this tutorial, guys. We will be starting the animation tutorial series next. That's it for this week's tutorial, guys. I hope you liked this one. Let me know if you did in the comment section. And if you have any suggestions, please also let me know. I'll be happy to help you guys out with some more tutorials in that direction. So, uh, we'll be doing the animation tutorial series next. And... 
I will be explaining what softwares I use again, uh, what hardware I use, and then we're gonna like entirely make an animation from like from complete scratch, from a complete white paper to a finished animation with voice acting, sound effects, and all that jazz. So you guys know how I do one of these things. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram to stay updated. And I guess I'll see you guys next week or so, I guess. Bye.